Howdy folks! It's a new decade and it's pretty amazing how much a person can change even in just one year. I made a video last year about why I'm not vegan. And it had to do with the non-vegan items that I still own. And watching it back, I was just like, why do I even want this stuff? You know, I, I don't need these things. I don't need them to survive. And it's just like the energy that, that I get from them. If I think about it, it's like this um, residue of suffering. And so today I'm gonna talk about how I decided to finally just release these items from my life. Did you have any non-vegan items after you became vegan that were difficult to let go of? Let me know in the comments below and how you released it from your life or if you're still hanging on to it. Some of the items that I had at that time that I already got rid of are like my paint brushes, I had a silk veil that I got in Hawaii and you know that was pretty easy to get rid of. I mean if you think about it, silk is just like worm excrement, right? Some people floss their teeth with silk, kind of gross. Even when I made that video there were a few things that I completely forgot I even had that were non-vegan. Like I had a hairbrush that was like a boar bristle hairbrush. Even just recently, I heard somebody mention abalone shells and I realized, oh my gosh, I have an abalone shell for burning sage and I've had it for many years, but I, I didn't even think of this as being a non-vegan item, but yes, uh, you know, there was an animal that used to live in here. This is like somebody's home. And there's probably an abalone shell industry that rips these animals from their shells so they can take their home and ship it across the world for profit. Abalone is a small to very large sea snail, marine gastropod mollusks in the family Haleotidae. Haleotidae. One of the non-vegan items that I have only just now decided, okay, I'm going to let it go, is my Indian wool blanket that I got at a powwow almost 30 years ago. And it's so cozy warm, but when I think about it, I think about, you know, those fibers came from an animal that suffered. And yes, this blanket was probably made like in the 80s. I discovered that back then, a lot of the sheep's wool came from like the Middle East. Many of them were shipped over on boats. And I was just thinking about those poor animals, you know, being taken from their home and put on a boat, even just how the wool itself was obtained from them. And so that blanket kind of represents animal suffering and I can't possibly take comfort in that. There's so many alternatives and I know a lot of people will say it's better to use natural items, which I understand, rather than going and buying a synthetic blanket. Last night, I just pulled out my old sleeping bag and I just threw that on top of my blankets and I was super cozy warm. I didn't have to go out and purchase anything new. And figuring out what to do with these non-vegan items is kind of the tricky part. You know, we don't want to just like let these, these items go to waste. I'm going to send this blanket to my sister in Oregon. I'm also sending her a little wool bonnet that I knitted. I made it from a vintage Norwegian pattern and it's really cute, but I don't need it. And um, I can't really take comfort in, in wearing that. So I'm also sending my sister the tri cornered hat that I got. Yeah, that hat is made of wool and it was bought used, but still, why? I didn't even realize it was wool when I bought it, but that was just stupid. I, you know, it's like all I had to do was look inside. Just another reminder, you must be diligent.
the last thing that is the last thing was my my first banjo Stella you know old banjos back in the day they were all made with goat skin heads and and yes she makes a beautiful sound but I have two other banjos and I don't really need to keep her she there is some sentimental value to Stella Yeah, so if you think about it as far as like my banjo and the head being made of goat skin, like how would I feel if it was made of human skin? And that's really disgusting. And the fact that I love animals more than people should make the fact that it's made of goat skin even worse. But if you think about it, how would you feel if your shoes were made out of human skin? I have two other banjos and they both have synthetic heads, so that's more than enough. I should probably have one banjo. I hope everyone has a peaceful, abundant, healthy, happy new decade. And thanks for watching. Peace, love, empathy. Bye.